Destination Freedom. Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic heritage of the Negro people, is brought to you by station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own Destination Freedom. When the story of America's national sport is written, there has got to be in it one chapter from the fabulous career of the world champion Cleveland Indians pitching ace Satchel Paige. Today, Destination Freedom will play that chapter entitled The Ballad of Satchel Paige. Nobody knows when he first played on a baseball field. Some say he put out Caesar when old Julius tried to steal. Some say he learned about curves watching Anthony's Cleopatra. But it ain't no truth in the story that Methuselah was his catcher. Oh, Satchel, oh, Satchel Page. Nobody dared to bother about his age. Cause he was the best pitcher that the good Lord ever made. Case history of the legend starts this way. Mobile, a kid named Leroy Page, roamed like a tumbleweed through the streets pitch bricks at tin cans on back fences when he played hooky from Oakdale High back near the bay. Struck out scrawny kids in sandlot ball games. Built a pitching arm and played against pro players who strayed down to the rough south side of town and sent them scurrying off with wild tales of a kid who had a baseball trained like a hawk. It could tear the heart out of home plate. Stood six feet three in his stocking feet could bend back like bamboo, could dust ash off a smoker cigar with a brick at 60 feet. And when he was 16 summers old, he heard about a baseball team in Chattanooga that was open to Negro ball players. And one hot day, he pointed his long, lean, size 14s toward Tennessee. And he went a treading over Lookout Mountain, down toward the ballpark in the valley. Tales went a spreading ahead of him. Over Lookout Mountain, his feet were a treading, and ahead of his feet, the tales started spreading. About a pitching man, over six foot tall, who had learned how to throw the atomic ball to Chattanooga Town when Satchel the gangling. To look out for was where he was the angling. Now the baseball boss, whose name was Bailey, had heard their tales and he argued daily with his coach Sam that they were not true. But the coach just grinned. There was something he knew. And he turned to boss Bailey, about to say something sage. When over the mountain trod big Satchel Page. They say that's the way he come down on that Chattanooga ballpark. He walked on the field, walked around the field, walked across the field and stopped in front of Boss Bailey. Hey, Coach. Hey, yes, sir, Mr. Bailey. Who's this scarecrow? Oh. Well, he comes from a little scrub team in Alabama. His name's Page. He pitches. These hicks have more fair stories about ball players than the Law Lows. Don't know baseball from a sweet potato. Hey, you. Page is the name. Leroy Page. And what might be your profession? I'm a pitcher, like he said. I need a pitcher, but you ain't the one. I'd like to catch him bad. The only catcher bad I'd ever hired be Josh Gibson. You Josh Gibson? No, sir. Well, who recommended you anyhow? Well, folks around home, mostly. I got the surprising kind of pitching, they'd say. They look, said... Look, kid. Uh, look, professional baseball ain't no game for you. I know you grew up reading about Casey at the bat instead of your rightful nursery rhyme. Right now, you ain't even a, ge a decent juvenile delinquent. Now, blow. I'd sure like to help your team. Best way is to get a job on our rivals team. Now, beat it. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Bailey. Yeah? Well, I own a part of the stock in this team, too. What are you getting at? Well, they, they say this kid here can pitch. You say that to say what? 
I bet you my share of the team's stock against yours. He'll do all right in a tryout. <laughs> oh, soft-hearted, soft-headed coach. If you take stock in tall tales, I shouldn't mind taking over your stock in the team. <laughs> All right, Sage or Cage or whatever they call you, grab a glove, go to the bullpen and warm up. <laughs> don't need no warming, mister. I stay hot. Oh, don't even know the physiology of the game. Well, see if you can find your way out on the mound. All right, sir. I'll do my best. Hey, coach, tell all the players to knock off and stand around up. Going to see that this hit gets his fill of baseball. Get me Hank. Sure, sure, Chief. Hey, hey, Hank. Hey, home run, Hank. The boss wants you. What pitching, boss? That screwball on the mound there wants to give somebody batting practice. Oblige him, will you? I'll shoot line drive straight at his head, boss. <laughs> no, you just play with him somewhat. Give the team a little relaxation. Sure, boss. I know just what he needs. Yeah, that hick needs a pitching good fit. Give it to him. Go give that hick a pitching good fit was that old boss man's cry. Knock that pitcher out of his box and I'll laugh until I die. The coach went down in the dugout and he dug up the team's best catcher. Then just for safety first, he measured Satch and got a stretcher. But not young Satch, no, he stood out on the mound with one arm on his hip and the other dangling down near the ground. And the ball players laughed like they had themselves a fit while the catcher put on his guard and grabbed his catcher's mitt. Hey, hey, come on, pitch up, quick song. Come on, pitch up, I'll show you why they call me home run Hank. Hey, young Satch bent way back, just like a stick of bamboo. Why, he looked like a hairpin or a standing horseshoe. One long foot kicked a hole in the sky. The other held the ground. Then he must have pitched that blazing ball, cause there was a whistling sound. Hey, what, 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 what happened? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Before. The bamboo stick had straightened up, and it stood still and surveyed the damage. They say the bat had been knocked down by the breeze, and the catcher was stone cold from the impact of the ball. All right, all right, stop standing around with your jibs loose. One of these here sudden Tennessee cyclones just passed us all. Now, have that catcher up on his feet now. Hey, now, kid, pitch, and don't wait for freak wind blast to help you. They help the stricken batter and give him a gentle shove. Got another catcher, put a pillow in his glove. Then young Satch went right back to the mound. He bent way, way back and bought the ball up from the ground. Hey, it happened again. The catcher knocked out cold again. Bet it knocked out with a breeze. Now, there, there's a cyclone around here. The weatherman should have warned us. It wasn't no wind, Mr. Bailey. Well, then he's got a cannon in his pocket. He ain't even got a slingshot. This kid, they say, ain't human. Look, every human's human. Yeah, but we... Set up another batter and catcher. We'll try one more time. They set up the batters like ten pins in a bowling alley. And he struck them down till the sun went down over Lookout Mountain. And the coach knew he'd won a team and had a player with the power of 22 men who could pitch like he wasn't quite exactly human. The players crowded around the wily old coach and told the catcher to analyze the pitch. The coach uh, says that me and you's gonna work together, Mr. Page. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be working with you from now on, Mr. Page. Well, Just call that. me Satchel, boys. Well, uh, what I was seeing is, uh, is your catcher We've got to get to understand each other. Sure. A uh, pitcher and a catcher's uh, got to go along uh, like a doctor and a nurse. Sure. Got to understand each other's signals. Yes. Now, if you don't mind telling me, uh, seeing as I don't want your trade secrets, you understand, uh, uh -huh. just want to know what I'm entitled to know. Why, sure. Uh, then tell me, what kinds of ball do you pitch? Uh, what kind? Like, uh, like, say, some pitchers got, uh, well, a curveball, yes. a knuckleball, yes. a jump ball, drop ball, uh -huh. bean ball, uh, you see? Uh, now, now give me a list of the kind of balls you'll be pitching so, so I can learn how to signal for them. Well, I'll tell you about the balls I throw. Yeah. One is fast. Yeah. 
The other is faster. Well, the catcher, he looked up and he heard old Satchel say, Maybe someday when I'm old and gray, there'll be other balls that I'll have to master. Now all I need is one that's fast and another one that's faster. He didn't have no curve and he didn't have no drop. Just one blazing ball that the batter couldn't stop. Oh, Satchel, yes, oh, Satchel Page built the pitch in the atomic age. Lean as a greyhound and as tall as a tree. He was the pitcher of history. Oh, Satchel, Satchel Page. They say they put him on that Tennessee team, put a uniform on his back, nailed spikes onto his 14s, and sent him pitching round the southern circuit. Umpires in New Orleans, Memphis, Houston, Birmingham, Atlanta, Jackson, Tallahassee, Macon, watched his blazing pitches and put out their reports. Strike three, batter's out! Strike three, batter's out! They say he had them all singing the same tune, week in and week out, year in and year out. And they put up a poster that said, Satchel Page is pitching here tonight. Batters beware, hitters hide. Batters beware, hitters hide. Batters beware. And people would come from miles around just to see him pitch. And he moved from team to team till he hit the town of Pittsburgh. And a guy named Gus Greenlee saw the gold dust dripping off his long, willowy right arm and called him in and asked him to sign a mighty odd contract. You pitch your arm off in that southern circuit, never get nowhere. I got a proposition. Yeah, what's your pitch? Now, my team, the Pittsburgh Crawfords, lost the best batter in the country, Josh Gibson. Oh, Josh Gibson? Yeah, gone with the Homestead Grays. Oh. I need you because you pitch like he bats. Now, nobody ever seen you banged out of the box. With the kind of rep you're building up, you'll draw a hundred grand a year. Kinda like to meet this guy, Gibson. Yeah, my advice. When you see him at bat, let's another sucker pitch. Now you've been winning 49 out of 50 games. That proves you ain't human. Uh, once you meet Josh. I've never met a batter who couldn't strike out. Sooner or later. If I have anything to say about it, you'll never meet this one. Play it safe. Let's barnstorm right. He barnstormed all around the country with Josh Gibson on his mind. He went a mowing down batters. Like on an assembly line. He frisked the lineups of 40 teams in 40 days, pitched shutouts, and in one game struck out 23 men, wept because the other four fouled out. Then they say young Satch went into Chicago to play a hot series game, and his manager stopped him in the dugout. Satch? Yeah? Uh, the team we're playing is imported a special batter. Yeah. I hope I don't hurt his feelings by striking him out. I hope he don't hurt your reputation. That reputation's worth 100000 a year to me. I can't afford to have it hurt. <laughs> me neither. That's why I strike him out. That special batter's Josh Gibson. I've been waiting for him a long time. They write songs about his hitting like they write songs about your pitching. You stay in the dugout. I'll put in a sub. I can't spoil your record. What about his? Yours is worth more. Look. I never duck no batter. I ain't ducking this one. Let me loosen my arm up on this kind of hitter. A little more. I ain't letting you pitch this game. It's either this game or no game. All right. Go to the slaughter, little lamb. He walked out on the field, headed toward the mound. Looked up in the bleachers, there was everyone in town. Why, the fans hung off the rafters, and the fans stood on the roof to see was Sage or Gibson best, see the naked proof. Josh Gibson, he was good, and he swung a heavy bat. And when he hit that ball, oh, child, it wasn't no loving pat. Old Satchel, he leaned back to give the folks a show. And then he straightened up and let his lightning go. <laughs> Josh adjusted his cap, and he let out a long, long sigh. 
As he watched that well-trained ball go zooming by, Satch wound up again to deliver another blow. Then something happened that hadn't happened before. <laughs> Josh hit the ball, and you could hear it sing. Shot over the walls just like it had some wings. Oh, Josh just went and crawled around the park because he knew they wouldn't find that ball till way, way after dark. They say the long shutout record of the satchel stopped. And the manager, who'd never quite believed young Satch was human, called him aside and said, You ain't the phenomenon I've been advertising. How you explain it? Well, it just proves that I'm human. They say the next time he pitched to old Josh Gibson, it was in a park in Chicago. He let three men get on base just to get to kill a Gibson. When he came up to the plate, Satch called out to him. Hey, Josh! Hey, Satch! I'm striking you out with three straight balls. Ain't no man that's human can do that to me. The first one will be fast. <laughs> Strike one! The next one's fast. <laughs> Strike two! This one's faster. <laughs> Strike three! And Bedlam broke out in the boxes like measles. The crowd threw so many straw hats out on the field, it took 20 attendants two hours to clear them away. Ten cops beat back the congratulators. Two doctors fixed Satch's hand bones he'd broke through handshaking. And he went traveling on and pitched against the big league batters in all star games. He caught Hack Wilson in Pasadena, struck him out six times straight. In Chicago, he sought out Babe Herman. The Babe never got the first base. Ted Williams swung out like a blind man in Brooklyn. He cut down Lloyd Wayner in Pittsburgh and struck out Joe DiMaggio in San Diego, dueled with Dizzy Dean up and down the West Coast and took him 11 games out of 12. Picked out a kid named Bob Feller in Iowa, taught him every trick in the trade and sent him up to the majors. And one pre-war year, Satchel knocked at the gates of the major leagues. But the scout shook a sad head. Uh, if you had been with the Cubs, the Sox, the Senators, you could have won many a pennant for them. And some of them teams ain't seen no part of a pennant in years. But they still won't take you. People keep pushing against the Jim Crow door. It'll crack wide open one of these days. I hope you'll still be around. The scouts kept a coming. The scouts kept a scouting. Not a single one, not a single one was doubting Into the major leagues, old Satch would go Once they got rid of that guy called Jim Crow And he kept traveling the circuit of the Negro League Played with the Baltimore Black Barons, the Cleveland Brown Bears Nashville Elite Giants, the Kansas City Monarchs got so good that touts followed him around the country and gave guarantees that sounded like fables. The great Satchel Page is pitching inside this park, folks. I'll bet you four to one he's a guarantee to strike out the first three batters. Oh, that's three. That's right, that's right. And he'd look back over his shoulder and see that the first inning was over and the three batters had already swung out like rusty gates and he'd call out. Oh, did I say the first three batters, folks? Five to one, Satchel guaranteed to strike out the first six. The first... And then Satchel sent down the next three. The touters would hear the umps report. And increase the guarantee. Did I say the first six? I'll guarantee he'll strike out the first nine. Guaranteed, folks. A guilt edge guaranteed. Get your tickets right here. Guaranteed to strike out nine men. They say he kept traveling and the guarantees kept growing. One season in Iowa, he struck out so many men, the outfielders were scared they'd be jailed for vagrancy, loitering around the ballparks with nothing to do. He pitched north in the summer, south in the winters, Latin America in the falls. He pitched all season, and his seasons lasted 12 months straight. And one winter season, on a ball field high in the hills of Mexico City, he was practicing some new pitches while his coach 
speculated. Yeah, changing your whole style of pitching, huh? Yeah. Think of ease up on the speedball. Throw in curves, drops, and a few foolers. Yeah. Uh, curves like this. Mm. Only, only it won't curve. Uh, looks all right to me. Funny, I, I didn't have no trouble curving it back in the States. <laughs> hey, watch, watch your arm. You've been curving that ball for hours. Uh, maybe it's the air. I ain't stopping till I get it to curve like a corkscrew. It was way up on the mountain, up on the mountain high. He couldn't throw a curveball, no matter how hard he tried. Satch woke up one Mexican morning, couldn't lift his arm to scratch his head. His trusty pitching arm seemed just like a piece of lead. All right, Doc. You've been studying my x-rays all day. Now, what's wrong with my arm? It is hard to explain. Can I pitch again? Never. Here's what has happened. Many American ball players make the same mistake. I'm no baseball expert, but, well... It's all right, Doc. Pitch it. Well, apparently, it takes a certain density of air to make a curveball curve. Uh, that is, uh, the spin on the curveball sets up a counter-reaction in the air which sometimes causes it to waver somewhat. Uh, is that it? Uh, keep on. Well, then, naturally, uh, when the air is thin, as up in the Mexican mountains, a pitcher can throw his arm off trying to set up air reaction. Nothing will happen except you can ruin, dislocate the important parts of the body. In yours, an infection has set in. I advise, Senor Page, rest. Plenty of rest. I can't get up on that mound again? If you do not want them to bury you under it, stay off it. Oh, hang up your glove. Forget the itch to pitch. If you don't want to be buried deep in a grave digger's ditch. Oh, Satchel listened, and he sat stone still. But he made up his mind to do the doctor's will. I'll go join the monarchs down in Kansas City. I'll just be a coach, you know, and boys, that's a pity. For that'll be the end, the end of me. Yes, that'll be the end, the end of me. Of old Satchel, old Satchel Page. They say batters come out of hiding from Houston to Honolulu and had a field day. They say pitchers from Pittsburgh to Panama went in mourning as Satch went coaching for the Monarchs. And for a long time, nobody could make his long, lean fingers touch a ball. Nobody except the boys he visited one day in a hospital ward in San Diego. They'd just come from Okinawa. They'd asked the government to send Satchel Page round, and he came. They sent him to the soldiers to bring them good cheer. But when they heard he quit the game, they wept for many a tear. One soldier said, Mr. Page, I've heard of you since I was a child. I wanted to come home and see you make them batters swing wild. Oh, Satchel, oh, Satchel Page, you was the best darn pitcher that the good Lord ever made. Oh, Satchel, oh, Satchel Page, please pitch once more, some soldier said. All right, said Satchel, I'll do it. Even if it kills me dead. Hey, Satchel. Hey, Satchel Page. He went back to the ballpark where the monarchs were playing. Walked out on the field past the coach and the players. And bet his life saving he'd strike out the first nine men. They say the crowd got quiet when he stepped on the mound. One leg shot up and tipped the sky. The other held firm to the ground. And he must have thrown his blazer ball, cause there was that whistling sound. <laughs> Strike one! There were curves, side arms, overhands, underarms. <laughs> Strike two! There were back jumpers and leap balls, <laughs> bumpers and Strike loopers, three. drops and dodges. Page was pitching! Ooh, we are 
snowball that'll split the heart of a dime. I'll pitch and pitch and pitch and I ain't gonna stop this time. I'll pitch the ball, I'll see for my old age. Said old Satchel, old Satchel Page. Lissay wound up like the first day he pointed his 14s toward Tennessee 25 years back. They say the batters and hard hitters went back into hiding. Uh, the doctor shook their heads and gave him up for dead. But he kept pitching round his 12-month season. And one evening in Cleveland, Bill Beck and Lou Boudreau stood by while he threw 50 pitches to a batter. That's enough. 46 strikes out of a possible 50. If you're ready to sign, that puts you on the Cleveland Indian steam. I've been ready a long, long time. Yeah, no. Too bad they can't see Satchel Page the way I used to see you when I was a kid. Slinging only those two kinds of pitches. Fast one and a faster one. Jim Crow's cheated sports fans out of a fabulous time. You still got enough, more than enough, to show them what they could have seen if they'd stopped segregation in baseball from the start. How about getting into uniform? True, you may not pitch like you used to at all. But you still got plenty of juice on the ball. Now look here, folks, I'm getting ready to go. Cause the rest of my story you all just about know. How with Dobie Gordon Keltner and that hustling Lou Bedreau, the Indians won the pennant and old Satchel steal the show. If you don't believe my stories, the sure enough gospel true. Goes to show baseball legend just amen for you. In front of him fame was always a dangling. It came mighty late for such a gangling. Oh, such a, oh, such a page. The greatest pitcher that my good Lord ever made. Oh, such a. Oh, such a pain. You have just heard Destination Freedom's dramatization of the story of the Cleveland Indians pitcher, Satchel Page. Destination Freedom is written by Richard Durham and produced under the direction of Homer Heck. <laughs> The role of Satchel Page was played by Harris Gaines. The balladeer was Oscar Brown, Jr. Others were Dean Almquist, Harvey Hayes, Ted Liss, Tony Parrish, and Fred Pinkard. The special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and played by Elwin Owen, Jose Bethencourt, and Lou Kastler. This is Charles Chan inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom will tell the story of Benjamin Banneker, Negro inventor and surveyor. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.